Hello everyone. Here's me again, Lulika Sophia from exploringdeeper.com, your intimacy activist. And um I was I'm I'm thinking and learning and diving deep into the topic of trauma a lot over the past years and the past weeks since uh in, in especially. And there is this thing that I've seen going on in the realms of workshops and personal growth and in many books, even books about business. And the thing is that um, we need to face our fears. Freedom is on the other side of, you know, diving deep into our fears head on, facing all our traumas. That's where freedom lies. And we need to face our fears and uh, when we're afraid, we know we're on the right track and we should keep going. And of course, that uh, that image that has gone viral uh, a lot of times, which says, which is this, this, this drawing of the comfort zone and then like a circle, which is the comfort zone and then this little circle way out of the comfort zone saying, this is where magic happens, um, which which I've said it many times, which is an image that I think is um, is 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 bullshit. Is really really hurtful actually. Um, so let me let me talk a little bit more about it. Let me share my thoughts with you on uh, do we need to face all our traumas? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so why would we face traumas? Like most most people have some sort of trauma. Let me let me start with saying a few words on trauma. You know, trauma could be, you know, the big events. There are big things that are like generally considered tra traumatic as uh, losing a parent in a young age, growing up in war, um, uh, having like this, this um, a sexual abuse happening to us, um, like, like, like a lot of sexual abuse over many years by trusted folks, um, having an accident, uh, being in a natural disaster. You know, there's these big things that we consider trauma. Uh, but that's not the only thing that causes trauma uh, in, in our systems. It can also be smaller things like uh, being bullied for a long stretch of time, having parents who do not, did not um, soothe your emotional needs. Um, there, it could be, it could be, uh, you know, these, these s seemingly smaller things like never feeling at home. Uh, being an outcast because of your uh, sexual preferences or gender choices or, you know, all these things. Um, not having friends, uh, being isolated. Uh, there's many, many things that can be that can be traumatic. And so most 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 of us carry some sort of trauma. Uh, romantic partners that cheat on us, that are not honest with us, who betray us, you know, friends that betray us, friends that uh, maybe maybe you're going through it right now, actually, friends that um, just cut contact. Um, you know, all these, all these things can be traumatic. So let me summarize it by saying that most of us carry some sort of trauma. And trauma usually is, um, what trauma is, is um, an experience that the system cannot handle in a moment. So uh, it could be an overwhelm of emotions that we cannot handle. Uh, it could be huge fear, huge anger, sadness, whatever it is, is, is more than we can handle. And we carry that with us. I like to make a comparison with, you know, boxes, boxes that we, you know, we, we close with duct tape and we put it on the attic and we pretend they're not there, you know, but they're there. And then at some point you, you, you have to, you're going to move, you, you need, or, you know, there is a leak, something leaking in the attic and you need to, you need to unpack them and, or you choose to unpack them, which is what healing is, you know, is when we consciously go into therapy or to workshops or whatever trauma healing we do is we're actually going to get those boxes and open them. And then some of the scary boxes, we open them, they might be empty and some of the like very innocent looking boxes, you open them and then you get overwhelmed with the contents of the box. So that's that's what I, what I how I would describe trauma, and um, yeah, so many of us carry that, and it's it's again it's this thing it's it seems to me a bit it seems to me to be a bit of a hype in the workshop world in the wellness world, uh, <clears throat> you know this broader world of self help and personal growth is. 
You know, the business model of that world, of course, is to make you believe something's wrong with you because otherwise there's nothing to sell, no workshop, no product, no nothing. So something's wrong with you and your trauma is something that could be wrong with you and that you should face, that you should work on, right? And okay, that's a topic we could discuss on its own, whether or not that's true. But let's say lots of us, many of us have trauma. So do we need to face all that? I believe that's your choice. That's absolutely your choice. Don't let anyone tell you you're broken or you're malfunctioning or you're not complete or not whole or not evolved for carrying trauma. All right, let me repeat that. If you carry trauma, there's nothing wrong with you. I think that's an important message. Now, you might want to work on trauma because you have the feeling that it will make your life easier or happier or better. Uh, and you may make the conscious choice to actually work on your trauma because yes, it's true that the less trauma you have, the more you will, the less you will be limited uh, or inhib or not so much inhibited to have certain ex certain experiences in your life, right? You might carry trauma around relating, but you do want a relationship, so it could be super helpful to work on your trauma around relationships to have a healthy relationship and not, you know unconsciously attract a toxic partner and you know repeat the whole trauma from your past again because that's what we tend to do we we're gonna repeat the past so especially in relating it can be amazing to work on your trauma and it's your choice it's your choice so let's assume you do want to work on your trauma you want to face it um it's your decision when you're ready to work on your trauma and how much you want to work on trauma right? I say this because I've been, I've been in a sort of uh, tantric, I don't, they call themselves tantric, I don't think they're tantric, sexuality um, cult that was really pushing people. Okay, you're afraid of your partner having sex with another person? Well, we'll hold you down while your partner fucks all a bunch of women in front of your face. You know, that's the kind of um, Facing your trauma in such a strong way that it'll probably increase the trauma, it makes it worse, right? And this is an extreme example. Um, you might not want to do that, right? I think it's super important that we get to know our comfort zone, that we know what our comfort zone is and when we're still in it and when we're on the edge of it. Because when, we, when we're in our comfort zone, you know, nothing changes much. We won't grow much because, you know, it's, it's where we're comfortable, it's where... You know, business as usual, but too far out of our comfort zone and we go into terror zone because our nervous system can't handle the stretch. You know, what happens with trauma is that the nervous system has gotten more sensitive towards certain dangers, you know, and, and we want to protect ourselves. That's, you know, that's a human thing. That's an animal. It's a biological mechanism. So with trauma, our brain, our nervous system will get more sensitive to certain things like if you have been cheated on and that felt traumatic to you uh, your partner just you know watching a certain other person might be triggering already um, so if that's you know let's keep that example if you want to learn to trust partners again if you have a past of cheating um, going hat first in an open relationship where your partner consensually has other people that they're dating might be a bit too much for your nervous system you know, it might be too much. Uh, your fight flight mechanism will probably switch on. That's our protective mechanism. You know, we have this fight, fight, freeze, appease systems, our uh, sympathetic nervous system, which which is designed to keep us safe. You know, it's designed to keep us safe. And that will have been more sensitive. It have it has been become more sensitive. So if you go too far out of your comfort zone. You go straight into the sympathetic nervous system in such an extent that it's really hard, you know, to keep your toes in your comfort zone, to, to, to know that there is a safe home base, that there is a safe ground where you can come back to, to breathe, relax, come back into the place where you feel safe, your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, but you need to be able to get back there. So if you go too far out of your comfort zone, if you make it too intense straight away, you might really traumatize yourself. So if you have this, this thing of cheating, maybe, you know, sitting, 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 uh, sitting in a pub with your partner, grabbing a beer, and then just consciously 
checking out other people might be just it, you know, because what we need to get when we want to, to, to drop the trauma, what we actually need to do is to retrain our brain is to get ourselves in situations where others have the power to hurt us because that's what happened when we got traumatized um, and they and you can learn you can get the proof so to say you can have the experience that they won't that you are actually safe um, and this is this is to me an important distinguishment is that yes it's good to face a trauma because it rewires the brain it changes our lives it changes who we are but if we go too far or maybe it's just not the right day because you have a shitty day and your nervous system is wired up already, then that's probably not a good day to face your fears. Maybe if you're a female-bodied person or like hormone-driven person, you know that you've got your monthly cycles. And for me personally, I know around ovulation, my mind is weird. I'm just anxious for no reason. It's not a good day to face trauma, All right? So... Um, and, and, you know, design your steps. What is a small step towards trust that you can, uh, that you can take and not necessarily, you know, make this huge leap and, and, you know, fuck yourself up. <laughs> so if it's about, do I need to face all my trauma? My short answer summarizing this whole, uh, whole, whole monologue is, um, you decide you're not broken. You're not broken. You may have trauma. You're not broken. You're not fucked up. Um, you've been through a lot let's acknowledge that first let's be compassionate like that was not fun that was shit that sucked um, acknowledging that first and then it's your decision whether or not you want to face it when you want to face it how much of that you want to face it and how to design the path towards healing and please don't let any commercial um, book teacher, facilitator, tempt you to do more than you want. And actually, if you are in a workshop, if you are in a session with a practitioner, if you are in a retreat and the team, the facilitating team is actually to push, pushing you further than you say you want to go, it's a giant red flag. It's a giant red flag. I would say, get the fuck out of there. That's not okay. Nobody should ever push you to face more of your fears than you want. Then you consensually, actively choose to do. So don't let any facilitator tell you something and then ask you, would you mind if we would do that? No, be like, I actually want to have this experience. And choose the places, choose the workshops, choose the books, choose the online courses where facilitators and their team, not just the facilitators, and their team actively encourage you to actually not do the exercises if that's not for you today. Think about it. And, you know, you have all the rights to have a high discernment and to say no and to have your boundaries. All right, that's what I wanted to say. Feel free to share your comments, your questions, any other topics you want me to talk about, your experiences with this. Please let me know. I'm super curious about your experiences and sending you so much love and compassion and uh, take care. Stay healthy. See you next time. Mwah.